Hello, and welcome to this iMovie tutorial. My name is Ken. I'm the Digital Services Specialist at the Barrington Area Library. Today we are going to create a picture slideshow using the iMovie software. To complete this tutorial, you will need a Mac computer. iMovie is the video editing software that comes pre-installed on all Mac computers. However, if you use a different video editing software, many of the same concepts I'm going to share will apply to those as well. Before we get started, I want to show you an example of the finished project. Okay, so this is the final version of the slideshow that I created. The goal of this project is to make something that looks similar to this. This is my dog, Louie. Let's open the iMovie app. You may already see it in your dock. The icon looks like a purple star with a camera in the center. If you see the icon, click it once to open the program. If you don't see it on your dock, then go up to the spotlight search in the upper right corner and type iMovie, and you will find it in the results. Click on it to open. Let's create a new project. Click on the Projects tab if you're not there already, and then click Create New, and then choose Movie. Now that our project is created, let's set up our preferences. Click on iMovie up in the menu bar, and then go ahead and click Preferences. And here we can set how our images will be imported. We want to select photo placement and let's choose crop to fill. For photo duration, we can leave that at four seconds. If you want, you can change it to your personal preference. Um, for transitions, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 0.5 seconds so we have quicker transitions. And then you can just go ahead and click X on this box and our preferences will be saved. The next step is to import our photos. We can click on import media right here. If you don't see this option, make sure you have the name of your project selected over here on the left hand side and then go ahead and click import media. Also click on the home icon with your name on it and then here you can navigate to wherever it is that your photos are whether that's your desktop, documents, another folder. So go ahead and find your photos and then click import all. Now if your photos are already in the Photos app on your computer, it's very easy to import. Under Libraries, go ahead and click Photos. And now you'll see that your photos appear. You can select them individually if you want, or you can choose Command and A and the combination of the command and A keys will select all of your photos. And then you can just click and drag your photos down to the timeline here. And now they're imported into your project. Okay, so let's talk about the interface of iMovie briefly. Down here we can see that this is the timeline. This is where we can place clips. Under the timeline is where we can add audio, which we will do in a little bit. 
And as you could see, when I'm hovering over these other photos here, over on the upper right, this is where we can see a preview of our movie. And so if I press the space bar, which is the equivalent of hitting play over here, it will go through our movie as it is right now. And so we can see that it's a total of 24 seconds so far. Um, if you do have a lot of photos in your project, you may not be able to see them all over here. Um, so right next to settings, there's a little bar over here and you can click and drag to the left and that will make each clip smaller so then you can see more of the photos or you can slide it to the right and that will make each one bigger so then you can scroll through it left and right like that. If you want to see your movie full screen then you can click on this button right here and then that will play the movie. In the left section here we can see right now it says my media and you can see all of the clips that are available to be imported into the project. If we click on audio then we can see the audio options, titles will give us options to add text to our movie, Backgrounds we won't be talking about with this project, but if you ever do anything with a green screen, you can add the stock backgrounds here. And then transitions, we will add these between our photos. And of course, there are other menu options on the top menu bar as well. Okay, so once our photos are in our timeline, we can adjust several things about each clip. So for example, all of them are four seconds long right now. If we wanted to make them longer, all you need to do is just hover over the edge of the clip like so, and then click and drag and that will make the clip longer. And you can see as I'm dragging, the time gets longer. So if you wanted this first photo to be seven seconds long, then you can just drag it like that. iMovie automatically saves your edits in real time. There is no menu option to save the project under the file tab, like in other programs you may be familiar with you can go to the edit menu to undo the last change you made. If you wanted to delete a picture that you don't want in here, all you need to do is just click on the clip and you'll see it gets highlighted in yellow. And then you can just simply hit the delete key on your keyboard and that will get rid of it. To bring it back, then you just need to go up to the top menu and go to edit and undo delete and also if you wanted to select multiple photos to delete at once then you can do so by holding down the command key and then clicking other ones that you want so if I wanted all of these that are highlighted in yellow to be deleted now I can just go back up to the edit menu and say delete you can change the order of your photos. All you need to do is click and drag a specific photo. If you hover between two other photos, you can drop the selected photo in the middle. Let's talk about some of the editing options. The editing options are in the upper right in iMovie. Um, first, let's talk about cropping. Cropping is the third tool. So when we imported our photos, you can see that the crop to fill option is uh, how we set these up. And if we wanted to adjust the crop, all you needed to do is hover over the corner and then drag 
inward and then you can also drag this box over if you wanted an even tighter crop for your pictures. Any edit that you make, you're going to select this check mark over here, and then you'll see the changes are applied. Another option for cropping is to choose fit. The difference between fit and crop to fill is that fit will show the entire photo uncropped. Choosing fit may cause the photos in the slideshow to look like they are different sizes depending on the aspect ratio of the original photos. Crop to fill will give a more uniform result in terms of the size of the photos. It's a matter of personal preference, so play around with it and see what you prefer. Also, you can choose the Ken Burns effect, and um, that's basically an automatic zoom effect. I'll show you an example if I click the check mark and then I start playing the video, you'll see that now this is zooming out. So if you wanted to add a little motion to your clips, then you can choose the Ken Burns effect. You can also choose the starting point and the end point and how much of the zoom happens. So here's an example of some more movement with the Ken Burns effect. Also, if any of your photos are not properly rotated, then in the cropping section you can also adjust them like so. If they get imported as portrait or landscape and they're not meant to be that way, then you can easily just rotate them with an iMovie. There are also a lot of editing options with color correction with an iMovie. So with a clip selected, if we go up to this second tool with color correction, if you click that, then you'll be able to adjust the contrast of the photo. So, for example, this one may look a little too bright. And so what you can do is, you know, just kind of adjust um, the parameters here and just kind of judge by the way it looks to, you know, give it uh, either a darker or more bright appearance. Um, and I just like to play around with each of these sliders. There's not really a scientific method that I have to adjusting the photo. If you do make a mistake that you don't like, you can always click the reset button right there. You can also adjust the coloration of the photo. You can make it more bright or more dull and you can adjust the warmth as well. You can make it look more sunny or less sunny in the photo. So these are all great tools that you can edit within the iMovie app. Okay, next let's talk about transitions. One quick way to add transitions between your photos is to select all the photos you can either click and drag and highlight them like that. If you have a longer slideshow though, an even easier way is to hold down Command and A on the keyboard that will select all of your photos. And then you can go up to the edit menu up here and then click add cross dissolve. So that will add a little cross dissolve transition between each of the photos. As you could see, they're half second transitions. That is what we set it to at the beginning of our project. And so, for example, this is what the cross dissolves will look like if I press play. So cross dissolves are perfectly fine, but what if we want other transitions? If we want something a little bit more fancy, then what we can do is go up to the transitions menu over here. And if you scroll down, there are many transitions to choose from here.
So you can preview each transition by just clicking on it and hitting the spacebar to play. So um, just for an example, I'm going to pick a few random ones and I'm going to just drag them just like I did the clips in the beginning. I will drag them down to the timeline and you want to place them in between your photos. Okay, so now I am going to play the movie and see how the transitions look. Yeah, and you may have noticed that there's a little bit of lag time on the transitions right here. It's because um, it's not fully rendered yet. So in the final version, when you export it, they will be uh, smoother transitions. So next, let's talk about adding titles. Let's go to the titles menu right here. As you can see, there are plenty of titles to choose from. Um, I am going to choose this third title and similarly to the transitions you can preview it by clicking on it and then hitting the spacebar to play each title. So anyway let me grab this one and you can click and drag it down to the timeline. There are two options for the placement of titles in the timeline. You can either have them as standalone clips with a black background by placing it in the timeline next to the other photos, or you can attach them to existing photos in your timeline by placing them on top of a photo. Double click on the title clip to edit it. So I am just going to title this dog slideshow and we can see the text is white by default if we don't want white text then you can click on the color at the end here and then you can click and drag to find a color that you like better whenever you get a good color then you can close this box and then go ahead and hit the check box there Okay, so if we wanted to change the font size, then we can double click on the title there, and then it will show up with the editing window. And we can go over here and change the font type, and we can change the font size. So this is 150, uh, let's go a little bit more, let's say 170. And then when we wanna save our changes, click on the check mark there. So this is what the intro looks like. Next we can add some audio to our slideshow. If you go up to the audio menu here and go to sound effects, iMovie has a great library of music that is all copyright free so you don't have to worry about any copyright infringement if you want to upload this to YouTube. Um, if you do want to add a song from your music library, then you can click music and then that pulls up the music from your computer if you wanted to get a specific song. But the sound effects category will give you a lot of good songs as well here. You can preview each one just by clicking the play button here. Um, I am going to choose a song and then I will show you how to add it to the timeline here. I decided I'm going to choose this park bench clip. Also something to keep in mind is you can see the time 
over here. So you might want to choose a longer song to fill up your slideshow, or you can just copy and paste a smaller one multiple times in order to um, fill up you know, the whole time of your slideshow here. So for park bench, all you need to do is just click and drag the clip. And then you'll see you want to drag it under your photos there into the music section. And you'll notice there's like a little bar that appears when you um, go to, to the bottom and then just drop that there. And now you'll see the music is in there. And so now if your slideshow was less than the length of your song, then you can go ahead and trim the clip here. You can um, trim it just by clicking and dragging the end of the clip. Or another way you can do it is just come to the end here and click so that the cursor um, goes down into the clip there. And we can trim it. So if we go to modify and split clip, now we can click on the part that was trimmed and tap delete on the keyboard. And so now you see the whole project is 28 seconds instead of a minute and 15. Another thing that we can add to our slideshow is narration. So for example, if I wanted to say something instead of typing it in a title, then I can go ahead and click on this microphone and it will record a voice over into the video. So like for example, I'm going to choose a picture of the husky and click on where I want the narration to start. So I want to start at the beginning of this clip and then I'm going to click the microphone and then it's going to count down and then it's going to show me where I'm going to start recording and then I will just record a quick voiceover. So uh, after you click the microphone then just go ahead and click on the record button to actually start recording. This is my dog Louie. And by the way it's not my dog Louie. Um, <laughs> it's just a picture I got from the internet. This is my dog, Louie. Yeah, so there we can see. If we scroll down, this is the audio of my voice. You may hear that my voice is a little quiet in comparison to the music. What you can do is hover over the line of the audio clip and then just bump it up so it was at 100%. So let's hear it at 140%. This is my dog, Louie. Also, another thing is you can also hear when I hit the stop on my keyboard there. So again, what you how you can trim that is just hover over the edge and then click and drag. And so that will make it so there's no unnecessary audio at the end. This is my dog, Louie. So this voiceover feature is a really cool way where you could add stories to your slideshow. So when we're all done editing our slideshow, we have a few options on how to share it. If we go up to the upper right corner, we see the share button. If you click it, you can see that you can share it in an email, upload it directly to YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo. You can also just export it as a video file to your computer's hard drive and then you can share that however you want later on. So 
Right now, I am just going to share this as a video file. And here you can title it. I am just going to call it Dog Slideshow. And then you can see the preview over here. You can adjust the resolution and quality if you want. I like to leave it at the default settings of 1080p and high quality. If you have a slideshow over 10 minutes, you can decrease the resolution or quality to speed up the render time, but it will give you a slightly lower quality video. Go ahead and click next. And then you are going to find a place to save it. So I will go ahead and save it to my desktop. And then I'm going to click Save. In the upper right, we see a circle. This shows the progress of the export. It will fill up like a pie chart as it renders. To view the final project again, go back toward the beginning of this video to view it. So that concludes this iMovie tutorial. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Please email me at digitalservices at balibrary.org. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.